They were but newfangled motion pictures, and all around you was reality. What can be more modern than today, especially when today is 1900? Think of it, the 20th century. The hustle and scurry of a century as fresh as a new pin. If other countries were anything like Britain, they were anthills indeed. For in the great industrial centres of the British Isles, trade and business had never looked better. With the whole world customer for her goods, this was a land humming with activity. Trade and bustle yet still sharp contrasts of class and wealth. For the labourer, a penny for the tram. Though more often he walked and thought little of it. Factory workers, hardy fishermen and farmers, folks who still worked all the hours of the clock and still touched the forelock to their betters. A Britain at the peak of a hundred years of prosperous expansion. Behind that Ascot elegance, was a strength that no other nation could challenge. On the school maps of the world, there was more red than any other colour. A red like that of the palace guardsman, for it marked the expanses and extent of Queen Victoria's British Empire. From the snows of Kilimanjaro, round the globe to Hong Kong, the wealth of Africa was the Queen's. The wool of her shawl came from Australia or New Zealand. For her men rode from Darwin to Sydney, Wallaroo to, yes, Queen Victoria Springs. For Victoria, they fell the timber of British Columbia and wide Saskatchewan. And woe betide any who broke her laws in the great Northwest. For there, her mounties always got their man. For her, 